What's up? This is Mario and welcome to Awesome Audio. In this video we will talk about just intonation and what it means to tune to a frequency different than 440 Hz. Besides tuning in equal temperament, which we explained in the previous episode, there is another tuning system called just intonation, where the frequencies of the notes are not obtained by powers of the 12th root of 2, but rather their ratio to the frequencies of other notes are fractions of whole numbers. This means that the pitch of some of the musical notes will sound slightly different than we're used to. This system is old and it is currently not really used since equal temperament is preferred over it. This is because, in equal temperament, the ratio between the frequency of any note and the next semitone is always the same regardless of the note, hence the name, while in just intonation, the ratio between a note and the next semitone would depend on the note. There are different just intonation tunings, which use slightly different ratios. For the examples in the video, I will use 5 limit tuning, whose characteristic is that only multiples of 2, 3 and 5 are used for the ratios. We will also use musical intervals, which in short are names for different amounts of semitone increments. For example, the minor second of any note is the note 1 semitone higher, the major second of any note is the note 2 semitones higher, etc., all the way to the octave which is a 12 semitone increment. If we use these intervals as semitone increments, there is no problem with using them in any tuning. However, sometimes they are represented numerically with just intonation ratios, which would give us the exact frequencies of the notes only in that specific tuning. So if we are in equal temperament, which is based in powers of the 12th root of 2, these ratios will only be approximations to the exact ratios we actually have. For example, the octave has a ratio of 2 to 1, which can be expressed as the fraction 2 over 1. If we solve it, 2 divided by 1 equals 2. So, if we have the frequency of C4 and we multiply it by 2, we get C5. This is the only ratio that's identical in both just intonation and equal temperament. The perfect fifth is a ratio of 3 to 2, or 3 divided by 2, which equals 1.5. So, if the frequency of C4 is multiplied by 1.5, we get the frequency of its perfect fifth, which is G4 in just intonation. The equal tempered ratio would be the 12th root of 2 to the 7th power, for being an increment of 7 semitones, which equals 1.4983. The minor seventh is 16 to 9, equal to 1.7777, which means C4's minor seventh has 1.7777 times its frequency. For the minor 7th, you go up 10 semitones, and the 12th root of 2 to the 10th power equals 1.7818. Observe that the just intonation ratios are approximate to the equal temperament ratios. Using these ratios, we can obtain the frequencies of the notes in just intonation, and compare them to the frequencies in equal temperament. With the numerical representations of musical intervals, we can also predict how consonant two notes will sound when played simultaneously. Generally, the smaller the numbers, the more consonant the notes will sound together. When someone talks about tuning to a different frequency, this means assigning that frequency to a specific note, and from it, calculating the frequencies of the rest of the notes. In equal temperament, we can calculate the frequency of all notes using this more generalized form of the formula I presented in the previous episode. For example, if you wanted to tune to A4 equals 415 Hz, you'd need to replace 415 Hz here, and A4's key number, which is key number 49, here. You would obtain the frequencies of all notes on an 88 key piano by solving the equation with n values from 1 through 88, one by one. You may find an Excel sheet like this, with this formula, useful for this. Another example is vertice tuning, also known as scientific tuning which is based in C4 equals 256 Hz. It is designed so that all C notes are powers of 2, and it has Pythagorean tuning intervals whose ratios are formed only with powers of 2 and powers of 3. Many people know this tuning as the A4 equals 432 Hz tuning. However, this tuning is not actually based on that frequency, but rather it is just a consequence of multiplying the frequency of C4, which is 256 Hz, by the Pythagorean interval of its major sixth. To calculate frequencies in just intonation, using any of these tunings, first you decide the starting note and its frequency, which will be the unison, and from there, you multiply its frequency by each of the corresponding ratios. This would be the frequencies of the fourth octave in vertice tuning, which is based in C. Once you have a complete octave, you can find the frequencies of the notes in the rest of the octaves by adding a multiplication or division by 2 in the calculation for each additional octave upwards or downwards, respectively. Some frequencies will be different depending on the note you start with. 
For example, if we calculate the frequencies based in D, the frequencies of A flat and C sharp are different. This is why if a musical composition is transposed to a different scale in just intonation, some notes would sound out of tune compared to the original scale, which does not happen in equal temperament. Using Audacity, which I recommended in episode 3, you may generate tones of any frequency by going to Generate Tone. You may find this useful if you wish to tune to frequencies of an alternative system or if you wish to compare the audible difference between two frequencies. A piece of advice, square and sawtooth waves are very loud, so while an amplitude of 0.8 is okay for a sine wave, I'd recommend you to lower the amplitude to 0.2 when generating a square wave or a sawtooth wave. As you can see, there are many ways to tune based on the intervals and the starting note. Just keep in mind that the currently most used system is equal temperament with A4 equals 440 Hz. With that, we conclude this episode. In the next one, we will talk about how to calculate the distance between guitar frets and about the problem of attempting to use Verdi's tuning on a guitar. If you enjoyed this episode, you may hit like, leave a comment, and share to those interested. For more content like this, you may also subscribe. See you in the next video.